Hey guys, and welcome back to another Design Together workshop. I'm Ahmed, and in this video, we're going to be designing a header navigation component. So let's get started. So this is the header navigation component that we're going to be designing in this video. It's made up of a header navigation frame, Inside that frame, we have a brand logo frame with a text element inside of it. Then we have our nav links, which are just some text elements with 24 padding between them. And then all these text elements are contained inside of a frame with 24 auto layout applied to it. So that if I were to change any of these nav links, my component would respond. And also if I were to add another item inside my header links frame, it would create a new item with 24 padding applied to it. Then we have our button or CTA, it's just a frame. Inside that frame, we have a text element with 16 vertical and 24 horizontal padding. The button, the button frame has a shared style of blue and also has auto layout applied to it with 24 and 16. So that if I were to change the CTA, my padding would be maintained. And then we have 24 padding between our header links wrapper and the button and they are both contained inside of the frame with 24 auto layout applied to it so that I've already increased the size or decreased the size of my button. This 24 padding is always maintained. Great, so let's start building this out. So I'm gonna go back to the desktop frame where we had created this header notification component in the last video. I'm gonna bring down my text here back to one line. Then I'm going to add a, another frame inside my desktop frame. So I'm gonna hit F on the keyboard and just drag to the edges of this desktop frame. And then I'm gonna rename this frame to header nav. I'm gonna align it to the bottom of my header notification frame. Then I wanna to toggle my columns. I'm gonna do that by hitting Control G. And this is just so I can align the element inside my header navigation frame. So let's start creating the button. So to do that, I'm going to first add a text element. So I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard and drag. I'm gonna say this is a button. I'm gonna give this text element auto width, and then I'm going to contain it inside of the frame. So option command G, I'm gonna rename this frame to button. And I wanna have 16 vertical padding and 24 horizontal padding. So I'm gonna hold option command down together. I'm gonna to drag to 16, and I'm gonna do the same for horizontal. So hold option and command down and drag. Drag it to 24. So now we have 16 vertical padding and 24 horizontal padding. So now we can apply auto layout. It'll detect the 16 and 24. I'm going to give this frame a blue fill or shared style of blue. And I'm going to change our border radius to eight and make sure that clip content is clicked so nothing goes past the edges of this frame. I'm also going to change the color of our text element to have the white shared style that we created previously. And great, now we have a responsive button component. So now if I change the CTA, we still have 16 uh, vertical and 24 horizontal padding. So now all that's left is to turn this button into a component. So now I'm going to cut it and paste it into my atomic elements page. And I'm gonna go to the top and click create component. So you go to your assets tab, you'll see this button now that's living inside of it. So let's go back to our desktop frame and just drag and drop it into our header navigation component. I just noticed I misspelled header nav here. So let's change that, header nav, okay. And I want it to have 32 vertical padding between the button and header nav. So hold option down, that's 32. Let's bring this down a bit. It's 35, four, three, two. That should be 32. Just align it to the edge of the column. Great, so now we have a reusable component inside a frame called header nav. So now let's start creating our nav links. So first I'm going to add a text element. So I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard and say nav link. I'm gonna give this nav link auto width as well. I'm going to lower the size down to 16. And I think I want my button to have 16 as well. So I'm gonna go back to my atomic elements and change this to 16. That's probably going to affect my padding. So let's see, 32, yeah, let's bring this down too. Let's 
So we got 32, 32, great. Let's align this to the center. And I'm gonna hold Option down and drag to duplicate this text element. Bring that to 24 and then hit Command D. So it duplicates the text element with the same padding that we dragged it to. And then I'm gonna put all my nav links or text elements inside of the frame. So I'm gonna hit Option Command G. I'm gonna call this frame Nav Links Wrapper. And I'm gonna apply auto layout to this frame as he detected that 24. So now if I were to create a new element inside my nav links wrapper, it would create it with 24 applied to it. So notice that we duplicated that instance to the right. We want it to duplicate it to the left. And to do that, we just need to change our constraints. So we have it left and top. I'm gonna to change that to right and center. I'm also gonna do the same for my button. So my button should be right and center. I'm going to center my nav links wrapper to the center of the header navigation frame. And then I want to have 24 padding between my button and my nav links wrapper. I always want this padding to be maintained, so I'm going to put my button and nav links wrapper inside of a frame. So I'm going to hit Option Command G. I'm going to call this frame nav wrapper. And then I'm going to apply auto layout to this frame, detected that 24. So now if I were to decrease or increase the size of my CTA, this 24 would be maintained. But again, we need to change the constraints of this nav wrapper. So let's bring it to the right and center. So now if we were to change it, my 24 is maintained between my nav links wrapper and my button. Great, we're almost there. All that's left is to make the logo. So let's add another frame that's going to contain our logo. I'm just gonna have it span three columns. I'm gonna call this frame brand logo. Inside this frame, I'm going to have a text element. So we're gonna hit T on the keyboard. And this is going to be our logo. I'm gonna style this text element. I'm gonna have it be all uppercase. I'm gonna have it left aligned. I'm gonna give it auto width. I'm gonna set the constraints to left and center. Align it to left and center of the brand logo frame. I'm also going to increase the letter spacing a bit just to give it more of a logo style, maybe increase the weight to medium. And then let's just bring the brand logo frame down to the size of this text. And then I'm going to center my brand logo frame to the center of my header navigation frame. Great, so we're almost done. All that's left is turn this header navigation frame into a component. This header navigation frame consists of a few atomic patterns. We have a logo here, we have a couple text elements with spacing applied to them, and we have our button. So it's a collection of atomic patterns. So we wanna create a new page, and I'm gonna call this page Molecular Elements. And this is going to host components that have a collection of multiple atomic patterns. So I'm going to cut and paste my header navigation frame. I'm gonna put it in Molecular Elements. I'm actually going to give this frame a fill. It's going to have the same white shared style that we created previously. Then I'm gonna to go to the top and click Create Component. So now if you go to your Assets tab, you'll see that you have all your atomic elements. And if you go to Molecular Elements, you will have your header navigation component. And this starts to make things a little bit more organized as you keep building out your design system. So let's go back to our desktop frame. And then I'm going to my Assets tab and go to my Molecular Element, drag and drop my header navigation inside my desktop frame. Align it to the way I want. And perfect, we're done. Now we have a reusable header navigation component. Be sure to check out the next video where we will be designing a hero section. Catch you there.